Hello, good evening, it's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for the end of days trading the 1st of October 2018. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal Signals for market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com and uh, you can certainly uh, download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, so uh, basically... Uh, uh, we have a strange day today, let's say at least, let's say that in terms of the FTSE 100, uh, a lot of volatility there, uh, especially given the variables that have been moving. Okay, so I tried to say, take you through the chronology of events. Basically, US markets gapped higher quite significantly in the back of the potential Canada deal. That obviously sent risk soaring higher, moving higher. Okay, so. Uh, that certainly helped the uh, European indices come off the lows, given the fact that last week they were down due to the ongoing concerns regarding Italy. And that certainly some remains in the background, so bear that in mind. Okay. Now, that allowed uh, the uh, Euro European market certainly to uh, obviously gain a reprieve. Now, given the fact that the German DAX certainly gapped high and held that gap, the FTSE really was a weakest link because we had ongoing concerns regarding the uh, Conservative Party conference over the weekend, that being a failure. Uh, given the potential leadership challenge there as well with regards to May and signals being sent there with Boris Johnson and the rest of the idiots uh, that, that formed the party unfortunately it's a shame but that's why I have to say at present they really are an idiotic party so given the fact that they're bickering amongst themselves just to uh, obviously potentially sign this uh, Brexit uh, uh, potential road path and it certainly seems this road's going to nowhere at the moment now uh, that certainly did change throughout the day okay so initially you had the uh, Obviously, strength in commodities, strength in uh, US equities, which obviously was helping the risk on bias. FTSE gapped higher, the market very sharply retreated. Now, if I just bring up the chart, the FTSE ready, I think FTSE ready is the one to show uh, in terms of the 10 minute chart, and you'll see exactly why. Okay, so initially you gap higher, you mark your sell off on the back of uh, the uh, failure of the Conservatives. Okay, concerns reg regarding the Conservative Party and the uh, Obviously, uh, Theresa May's potential lack of power and lack of uh, support, okay, especially with regards to a checkers failure as well, so bear that in mind. Then the market rallies, okay, on the back of, uh, obviously, a reprieve in uh, from the Italian market sell-off, a reprieve uh, in terms of the ongoing global trade concerns, okay, given the fact that they signed a deal with Mexico, signed a deal with Canada, and the next one, obviously, is China. We did have some conciliatory remarks from China as well, saying that they wanted to obviously sit down the negotiating table and blah, 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 blah. Obviously, uh, uh, engagement is better and better than disengagement. Comments like that certainly do help the uh, market bias as well for, on, the, on, the, on the upside. So then we had a market squeeze. Okay, so the market squeeze. And this is where the, the news obviously hit with regards to a potential deal with Northern Ireland, which obviously sent the sterling price higher, which in turn sent the FTSE 100 lower. So... It certainly seems the market's very sensitive to sterling, and then obviously the market did stabilise here around the 7490 zone, the back of uh, obviously oil prices spiking as well. Whether that be due to Iran, etc., it's a totally different game altogether. Uh, a lot of individuals could say it's due to economic growth, given the fact that the Canada deal is done and Chinese China deals obviously will be next. Now you can see Brent here breaking out on the 60-minute chart, and that obviously is helping FTSE to a large extent. So that's certainly helping the commodities okay so that's basically the, uh, the the status quo okay in terms of the stories throughout the day there was nothing really major in terms of european data okay we did have a construction spending that came in weaker than expected ism prices paid in manufacturing ism manufacturing for the us all came in weaker as well which in turn obviously sent the uh, s p 500 moving uh, moving lower as well if you look at the s p 500 uh, even given the bullish news we still fail to certainly pushed new heights so you can see a 10 minute chart clearly shows the market gapped higher and that gap certainly was sold into okay that isn't a bullish sign at all okay uh we almost potentially even close the gap at 29.14 so just take that into consideration given the fact that the s p obviously uh, failed to uh, to push higher okay so that's basically the uh, status quo now we did actually gave back give back a lot of those gains you can see 29.37 and the market retreated back down 29.18. So that's quite impressive. Quite an impressive self, to say the least. Okay, so that's basically where we stand, okay, in terms of the market. Watch out for gap fill below. So you've got gap fill below. At um, 29.13, uh, you've got obviously horizontal resistance up here at 29.37. So watch out for those zones and those levels. That's basically where we stand. Okay, in terms of the S&P, and really the S&P is dictating to a large extent 
as you can see here you may be making lower lows and lower highs and all of a sudden the market spikes quite an impressive spike as well um, so again you just have to respect the market for what it is uh, obviously one one would have thought lower high lower low that wasn't the case we actually got higher high and then obviously the market then just went into a swoon so it's interesting that pivot high at 29 40 is certain years of holding for now and that needs to be respected okay uh, in terms of the European equities and given the fact that I've given the backdrop again like I said a reprieve from the Italian market sell-off you can see here that I'm showing DAX certainly gapping higher uh, the 10 minute chart you can clearly see uh, this morning we gapped higher from Friday's high uh, and the market continued to move higher so that's quite impressive so you need to respect that for now you do have an unfilled gap on the German DAX at 12 435 so watch out above if the market continues to uh, slide in the back of those Italian concerns then you are looking to potentially close the gap below at uh, 12 160 then you've got support at 12.060 as well so watch out below in terms of the rest of the european equities let's look at the french cac daily chart still holding that key resistance for now 5540 and then you've got resistance at 5560 so you need to respect that for now 60 minute chart you do have this hns formation led by uh, italy so again that's a cause for concern with regards to italy uh, again if the markets do push high in the back of us equities then you do have that gap to close at 5540 or there is a potential uh, resolution type scenario for Italy that obviously will trigger a gap, gap fill as well. Now, obviously, Canada deal, that certainly was a curveball. A lot of individuals weren't expecting that. That was really unexpected given the fact that they were bickering amongst themselves as well. A lot of uh, uh, comments going back and forth, uh, but in the end, they certainly did sign that deal. Okay, so that's basically where we stand in terms of French CAC. Uh, now the FTSE 100 are giving you an insight as well so watch out for support 7490 you've got resistance up here on the 10 minute chart at 7525 then you've got resistance at 7535 then ultimate resistance at 7550 so watch out there okay so that's basically where we stand now the euro stocks let's just give you an insight here uh, euro stocks did hit a pivot high of 3425 uh, before it actually started to go into a swoon again uh, you've got the support 3410 for now Okay, on the 10 minute chart, you still have the unfilled gap at 3450. Okay, so in terms of the markets, obviously the flushed pivot low for now is 3380. So watch out for that pivot low. You do have an unfilled gap above at 3450. Really, we're in no man's land at the moment. And let's see how the market certainly plays out. Okay, so again, given Italian concerns, etc., it certainly is hard. To envisage a potential thrust high up 3450, unless there's a potential, obviously, deal breaker there with regards to Italy and obviously the Eurozone, etc. etc. So, it certainly is a lot of currents out playing this market. Okay, it's best to, uh, from my perspective, this week I've definitely reduced risk. Okay, uh, and uh, given the uh, volatility regarding the trade war concerns regarding Italy, etc., emerging markets, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I think that's a good summation, really, of European indices. Please be sure to visit tradescfds.com to take advantage of that bonus, and be sure to visit TradeSignal. Download the latest app. Goodbye now.